Good morning. Today we are going to discuss about the fault. We have already studied the folds in our last unit. Folds were the example of a plastic deformation where under the effect of stress, the rock behaved plastically. But the folds are entirely different from the fold. They behave entirely different. They behave in a brittle manner and because of which an entire new structure is developed over the rock. Formation of fold or fault ultimately depends upon the stress applied. At the same time, it also depends on the nature of the rock, which is subjected under the pressure. So let us see what fault is. It is a fracture in the rock along which the displacement has occurred. So fault is a fracture in the rock body along which a necessary displacement has occurred. If there is no displacement, in that case, we will call them as fracture. But if there is a displacement between this or along this fracture, then such kind of fracture can be termed as fault. Fault can be of very smaller size or can be of massive size. We can get a very fine size faulting, whereas we can also get the mega size faulting, may extend up to 500 kilometers or more. In faulting, the blocks, usually the blocks moved or displaced you know, apart from each other. Such displacement are characterized by multiple uh, aspects, which we are going to study further. Let us discuss about the formation of the fold. As I have already told you that the fold and the fold are the geological structures formed under the effect of stress and the fold and folds are the resultant features. Say for example, your rock bed is applied under stress of tensional nature. So if you pull the rock from both the side, the tensional stress will apply and accordingly the surface will expand and somewhere the crust will start thinning and ultimately gives rise to a normal fault. You can see the fault over there. In the second case, you can see when the rocks are compressed from both the side, they will, you know, they will shorten themselves and because of which the folding may happen. Now, if the stress does not overcome the plastic limit, elastic limit or the plastic limit, the fold will remain as it is. But if it goes on continuously compressing, then it will cross the plastic limit and ultimately brittle, will, brittle deformation will happen and there will be a break in the bed and ultimately you will get the reverse fold. Similarly, if there is a shear stress, then the results are entirely different. You can see the in the strike slip fold is there. Means it ultimately depends upon what kind of force or what kind of stress is applied on the rock body and uh, the resultant outputs will be different. So we know that the tectonic activities are uh, responsible for such kind of stress or such kind of rock deformations. Where the tectonism is uh, quite active, you can easily notice such kind of geological structures like fold and fold. Folds are necessarily a brittle deformation, whereas fold are the plastic deformations or ductile deformations. So it also depends on the quality of the rock. Say for example, you have a rock with very less plastic limit. In that case, even a slight stress on it can give rise to a rupture along which the displacement may occur. 
so it also depends upon the rock nature against the stress applied let us see the fault morphology here you can see if you will consider a normal fault for an example you will see here the two blocks moves apart from each other there is a displacement the arrow can show you the arrow will show the displacement so the plane along which the displacement occurred is called as fault plane and the patch or the band which is developed along which the wall is displaced that patch is called as fault scar because it was first initially it was under the surface but due to movement it exposed and hence it is called as fault scar that fault scar can indicate the direction of the movement of the block because during its movement it develops striation on the fault scar and uh, with that striation you can identify that uh, in what direction the ball is moved now the block lying above the fault plane is called as hanging wall though it is comparatively down but still it is on the fault plane hence it is called as a hanging wall and the wall which is below the fault plane is called as a foot wall in the picture you can see that how the foot wall is below the fault plane whereas the hanging wall is above the fault plane the line okay the line which actually is on the fault plane and which defines the fault uh, of that uh, region is termed as a fault line okay so here we have seen that the uh, hanging wall the foot wall the fault scar the fault line and the fault plane now let us discuss more complex uh, terminologies related to fault morphology look at the section 1 here you can see the uh, two blocks moved apart from each other and uh, this is a kind of normal fault where the hanging wall goes down you can see here there is a separation of two points the two points which were initially uh, at one point they were connected now they have been displaced to a certain extent that displacement can be termed as deep separation because it is separated towards the deep of the fault so the horizontal component of this separation is called as heave okay and the vertical component is called as throw so this is very important to understand the horizontal component is section 2 you can see is called as heave and the vertical component of this separation or the displacement is called as throw of the fault so fault has heave and fault has throw okay heave is a horizontal component and throw is a vertical component of the separation at the same time we have a deep of fault what the deep of fault is it is the angle made by the fault plane with respect to the horizontal surface it is called as a deep of the uh, fault plane and there is a head of the fault plane what the head see the angle made by the fault plane with respect to the horizontal surface is the d and the angle made by the fault plane with respect to the vertical axis vertical plane is called as head the addition of uh, deep and head will be equal to 90 degree so i'll repeat this again heave is a horizontal component of this separation throw is the vertical component of this separation or displacement the angle made by fault plane with horizontal is a deep and with the vertical imaginary vertical plane will be head the uh, addition of head and deep will be equal to 90 degree let us see some examples of faults in the field these are the well known examples of the faults you can see that these faults can range from a smaller scale to much bigger scale okay in the first picture you can see that how the two blocks where they are actually the black color band is separated from each other initially before faulting they would have been connected but due to faulting there is a displacement around the fault and ultimately we have got such type of structure the second picture towards the left hand corner you can see the big fault okay this fault is uh, well known as sand anders fault and uh, this i think this fault extends up to 500 kilometers so i think it is the one of the biggest fault on the earth surface 
and on the third uh, you can see here the another example of field fault so you can easily observe the faults in the field so let us revise uh, what we have studied today so we have studied about the fault uh, basics of fault okay in which we have seen what fault is a uh, fault is a fracture in the rock along which the displacement has occurred if there is no displacement then that will not be termed as fault it will be termed as a fracture then we have seen the fault formation and in fault formation we observed that how tectonic forces like tensional stress compressional stress and shear stress are responsible for the formation of different kind of faults here we must understand that the fault is actually a example of ductile or a plastic deformation but fault is an example of brittle deformation if your rock is brittle in uh, in another word if its plastic limit is very low in that case it will break uh, much uh, faster than the uh, though than in comparison to those rocks whose plastic limit is higher in that case even a small stress on such rocks may develops uh, faults so you see tension stress has developed another fault whereas compressional and shear has developed another kind of fault so it ultimately depends upon the stress applied and the nature of the rock when we have seen the fault morphology in form fault morphology we observe that on the application of stress how the hanging wall slips or over the foot wall this is normal fault where you can see the plane along which the slip has occurred is a fault plane the block lying above the fault plane is called as a hanging wall the block lying below the foot wall, uh, fault plane is called as a foot wall whereas the uh, the surface uh, generated after the displacement is called as fault scar and uh, line along which you can get the strike of the fault is called as a fault line then we have seen the um, uh, another components of the fault where we have seen the horizontal component of the separation is heave the vertical component of the separation is throw the deep of the fault is uh, the angle made by the fault plane with respect to horizontal surface is a deep the angle made by the fault plane with respect to the vertical plane is called as head and the, the total of head and uh, deep will be equal to 90 degree of course and uh, then we have seen the examples of faults in the field you can see that uh, the faults are easily recognizable in the field and if uh, they are not recognizable by the naked uh, evidences we have to find or we have to search for some another evidences like fault scarps fault striation you know alignment of spring and etc etc and they can range from smaller uh, size to the mega size okay so this was all about the fault uh, thank you very much for your patience listening